everyone and welcome to this SSH tutorial where we're going to do a very quick tutorial on SSH access. We're just going to do the basic SSH access to our devices. Um, as per every other video, um, if you like this, hit the like button. If you want to comment, please do. If you want to share, then please share. And last but not least, please make sure you hit that subscribe button that you'll see in the bottom right hand corner of the video. So we're going to jump straight into the configuration screen today. So here we are at our Junos configuration screen. We're currently in operational mode. There are a couple of things that we have to do to enable SSH. So ahead of the interface configuration tutorials, I'm going to show you in this lesson, in this tutorial, how to actually configure an IP address on an interface because we will have to do that as it will be utilized as the management address. The management address being the address that we are going to SSH to. Without that, we can't SSH to the system. So the second piece of information to give you is why don't we use Telnet? We're connected into Telnet as it is at the moment. This is because Telnet sends information plain text. This is not good as obviously the passwords and the usernames are all sent plain text and therefore can be read, whereas SSH creates RSA keys and the information is encrypted. So we need to utilize SSH version two. So with that being said, let's go into configuration mode and if you remember from the last lesson we can use edit we can use configuration we can use config private we can use config exclusive for this particular lesson we're just going to go into edit mode now i happen to know that the interface that my network is connected to is interface ge-000 so that's the interface that I am going to go ahead and put an IP address on for management that has to be within the management network range. And what I mean by that is if the management range is a class C, and we will go through a lesson on um, IP configuration, so subnets, but let's just say hypothetically it's 192.168.1.0 forward slash 24 i would have to ensure that this management address was within that range so somewhere between 192.168.1.1 through to 254 normally one is reserved for a gateway and we'll also go into that in later tutorials and one is reserved as the broadcast address for the network so you always lose two addresses so let's go ahead and set an interface up with an IP address. And it's very, very simple, really. We'll give it a description as well. So all we do is we say set interfaces. As I said, I know it's GE-000. And all we have to do for a description, this is for the benefit of other engineers. And we'll just put to the management network. Uh, yeah, you can't leave a space. If you want to leave a space, you have to put it in hyphens. So now I can put to the management, uh, not hyphens, sorry, uh, speech marks, double quotes, to the management network. I can do it this way. So we'll enter that and then we're going to set the IP address. So we simply do set interface GE-000. Now we have to put a unit number in here and the main unit number is unit zero. So that's what we're going to put in here, unit zero. This will all be explained in greater depth under the interfaces tutorial once we get to that tutorial. For the moment, just note that to put this management address, for the moment, just use unit zero. And then we put family INET, internet, internet addressing, internet address and the address we want to give it so for my network it's on a 16 so i have to do 192.168.16 dot and i can give it 
a number after this. So let's just give it 65. And then I put the actual mask. So in this case, I know it's a 24. It's a class C. So it's 24 bits masked out of 32. So we enter that. We can do a commit check. And that succeeds. So we'll commit that. And then to view that information, do you remember that we did the run show because we're in configuration mode? So if we do a run show interfaces terse, it's the equivalent of show IP in brief in Cisco. So let's have a look. And there we go. We've got it configured on GE000. So I can control C out of that. Now we have to set up SSH. So we do, it's a system wide. So we do set. Remember I said it's system, system. And it's a service. So we go services and we say SS. H. And what options do we have? Currently for this lesson, we're just going to do a very basic SSH. However, you would want to, under normal circumstances, disable root login, disable TCP forwarding. Uh, no TCP forwarding is the one you want. Uh, there's quite a few different things on here. You'd want a connection limit. In other words, how many people can connect at the same time? So, this is what you would want to put on here, okay? But we're just going to put the basic set system services, SSH. And then we're going to do a commit. We'll do a commit check again. So it succeeds and we'll do a commit. Now, normally here, you would see it go through configuring the RSA keys and then do commit complete. In my case, I've already set once system services SSH on here. So therefore the keys have already been created. So what we're going to do next is we're going to log out of this and we're going to log back in utilizing SSH. So here we are at the new PuTTY configuration screen. I'll change the settings here so that you know how to do this to make the font larger, etc. So I'm going to change this to a 16 and make it bold so it's easier to read. And I'm going to change the colors to use the system colors. That gives me black on white. It, again, it makes it easier to read. So uh, we now go to the actual session itself. And what address did we put? We put 192.168.16.65. Uh, and we know that SSH is port 22. So we should now be able to open this session. And what will happen is we will get this screen will appear that will tell us that the host key is not cached in our registry. Do we want to cache it? Yes, of course we do, because otherwise we cannot connect to the system. So let's go ahead and say yes to that, and then we'll see what the system tells us. So the system has given us our login screen utilizing SSH. So if I put in my credentials and we're into the system again. Okay. And that is a basic SSH configuration completed. You can now get onto your systems utilizing SSH instead of Telnet. As always, if you enjoy this lesson, lesson, Make sure you hit that subscribe button. That would be great and fantastic because I want to see as many of you as possible learning as much as possible. Also, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next lesson.